So what makes somebody so so why are people not um comfortable with making changes then? Because then we have a financial setup that's absolutely wonderful for certain people. Yeah. And they don't want to change things but yeah. you know, the satellites are falling out of the skies now. We have a massive problem with GPS. GPS is used for so many different things. It is now unreliable because they need a stable atmosphere to be able to send the signals through and to do the calculations for time. Um, it's so bad now that the military have actually started doing um, exercises where they don't use GPS. Really? The UK, they've started doing military exercises without GPS because they know it's unreliable. So they're going back so, to the old, good old maps? Well, yeah, they're, they're even telling mariners and, and fishermen and people who use boats, learn how to use, how to read a map and learn how to do things the old-fashioned way. Because GPS is failing. The US and the UK government made an announcement that in the event of a Category 5 geomagnetic storm, they were going to um, just literally just cut the power. They were just going to shut the grids off in the hope that they that they could save the grid. So what one engineer has actually called, I think his name is Paul Capenman, I think his name is, who, who has been campaigning for quite a few years now, and it, he's actually got the military to listen to him, yeah. an American engineer. Um, he talks about um, authorities playing Russian roulette with the sun. That is basically what they're doing. They're saying, well, you know, if we're going to get some kind of advance warning, then we can shut down everything. But to me, you're hoping if you advance warning. <laughs> yeah, right. It's that that makes serious. sense. Yeah. It's that serious. At the moment, we only have the ACE satellite and it's um, past its sell-by date. It, we really need to have some new satellites up there. Now, the thing with all this is that there are satellites up there but we don't know what they're doing so why why make all these electronic cars then that need satellite like you can't turn on a car a modern car w w without with with keys now why did they invent cars like this if they know this was going to happen well that's the whole point um we have the ancient warnings and nobody was really taking it seriously okay the aquarius okay if you look at Astronomy. Yeah. You have this zodiac. You have the twelve different segments. And yeah. And then there's another issue because some people say there's thirteen. And um, you have one called the Age of Aquarius, where you have a young man with an urn of water pouring out of the skies, out of the heavens. Yeah. Um, that is highly symbolic. Somebody in the past was trying to preserve the ancient knowledge that at certain times. We get this deluge of energy. I believe world controllers and authorities fell asleep or didn't pay attention to the ancient warnings. Yeah. And, changed. and this has suddenly come very quickly. So this, quicker than this, they expected. So you think they thought, ah, they don't know what they were talking about. Ah, it's not that serious. So yes. nobody took it as literal. Yes, as it is. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not into astrology or all that kind of stuff. Right. I'm much more interested in the straight astronomy. Right. And according to our astronomers, and now let me get this right. Um, oh, we are in the age of Aquarius. Right. Because because at the spring equinox, that right before dawn, the very first um, constellation that rises, no, just before dawn, I believe it is, the very first, um, when you look east, I believe it's, you have to check this, the very first constellation that rises is Aquarius, and as far as the astronomers are concerned, we are in the age of Aquarius. Right, we are. And the idea is, is that um, this ancient knowledge has been preserved we were supposed to pay attention or certain leaders in society or the church or all the spiritual people the metaphysical community they were supposed to pay attention to all this and i believe that they they failed 
so no, you, it's not just. So do you think our elites and our government are in the same boat as we are? Do you think that they are? Um, they were just a, yeah. Do you, do you think they're gonna abandon ship? <laughs> Yeah. And he's very interested in what's going on with the Catholic Church. Yeah. And um, he he has been um, he found out that the um, the elites the the um, what do you call them the, the the American founding fathers actually went to South America and they copied the Aztec sunstone um, and brought it and put it back and put it in a very prominent place in Washington, D.C. Now, why would they go to South America to a completely different culture and pick up some artifact and then place it in America? In a, in a sort of, um, now, oh, I'm gonna have to get this right, so I don't wanna get this wrong. Um, I actually have a little section called the American Founding Fathers New. Okay. And uh, there is um, a frieze in the rotunda of the United States Capitol, and it's like a painted panorama of significant events in American history, except for one of them has got nothing to do with American history. <laughs> and it's this Aztec sunstone. And the idea is, is that they've preserved, is hidden but in plain sight, mm. important information. And this is what these elites have done over thousands thousands of years they've preserved important astronomical information that we should be paying attention to but they didn't use it for themselves either so what was the point in preserving it then <sighs> you know just this is so the just that they could live out there this is, I, this is the part of humanity not respecting okay uh, you know okay the universe. It's, it's, it's about a sort of having it's, respect and yeah, and it's, a, it's, it's, from, it's, it's no, arrogant. Sure. Yeah, it, it is their it's, arrogance. It's, it's an arrogance. Yes, it is an arrogance. Yeah. Um, how people can... Um, <laughs> so it's very difficult because the more I find out, the more stunned I am, basically. I mean, yeah. so basically, this exists. Yeah. And this, if you read all this 2012 stuff, um, not all of it is rubbish. I mean, there are definitely artifacts that people are pointing to this time and this is what this Tom Horn has discovered and that he found information that points to the date 2012. Now the idea is it's not the end of the world, it's the end of an age. Or the end it, of the world as you once knew it too. Yeah. It's, it's a, yeah, an end of the world age. It's, it's yeah. a sort of a period of time and right. thousands of years and that we've now come to this point where you have this influx of energy. It's it's a cosmic but also highly spiritual turn. Yeah. And this is how the universe works. Now I just want to point this, it's coming to my mind. Um, this is why I'm very interested in Catholicism because it's a religion that's been around for thousands of years yeah. and they've collected ancient, lots of ancient texts. One of the things that's very interesting is that in the Middle Ages, before you were allowed to become a priest or a philosopher, you had to study astronomy at the university before you were allowed to become a priest. And that's because the this is part of the tradition of the astronomer priest. How these people had this understanding of the universe. Yeah, because it's the above the about so as above so below respect. It's the connection. Yes. So it does make sense that they would do that. Yeah. Well, this is how religion evolves. Yeah. At the end of the day, this energy that comes, this spiritual energy, does affect humans. Right. It does affect you. Right. You know, when people are praying and they're meditating, they're literally, they are literally sending signals out into the universe. Yeah. These energies are coming in and affecting people. Yeah. And to, it's, it's not... Um, just a sort of, um, I mean, people think that praying and, and um, all this 
sort of stuff and working with people's energy fields and healing. They think it's just nonsense. No. No, it's real. Because it's energy. People are acting like radio beacons and attracting certain energies from the cosmos. That's what it's all about. But th the difference now is you don't have to attract. It's falling on your heads now. <laughs> Well, well, I think it's all their prayers combined with ours that's bringing all this stuff in. There was the point. The, the point now is that um, at, at certain times you have to work hard yeah. to attract these special energies. Yeah. Some of these energies are rejuvenating, like Kundalini energies. Um, this it, it allows for spiritual progression and evolution, and for living a long life. And yeah. All this sort of stuff. However, now. It's a totally different kettle of fish. Now we're in a situation where it's literally falling on your head and it, the, the environment is so intense. It's the intensity of it all that some people cannot cope with. So that is that why some place. people are losing their marbles? Yeah, because they can't cope with the, with the environment. The, the, the spiritual environment now is chaotic. The, the geomagnetic environment is chaotic. So but that's why, so that's why, no, yeah. So not it's everybody not can intense. can contain that energy, eh? It's intense now. It's okay. Intense. And this is where you've got the judgment, and this is where you've got the, um, the revolution or the devolution. Who can cope with it and who can't cope with it? So it's the like, idea it's, is people were supposed to have prepared themselves. Yeah, if you, yeah, happened. that is true because that is the sad point because if we were all educated, taught in school, taught throughout our life uh, for, for this moment, we would all be right in the wave together. And I'm not sure even that everybody, because some people are well, not at the level of consciousness. Well, they, more, more, than, more than what is right in the wave now, you know, because the ones that are right in the wave, they had to go out and work for it. You know, this was you being courageous and following your gut, you know, while everybody well, else think you were crazy, you were following your gut, you know. Well, you know, I, mean, I, I look at the metaphysical community. I, yeah. I, I look at the religious community and I, I just think there's so many things that have been hidden from people. Yeah. I, I'm a seeker and I've had to work really hard, hard yeah. to, to, to understand this. Yeah. In, um, to, 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 I've always had to work really hard yeah. to understand this and then to be able to teach other people yeah. in, a, in a coherent manner. Yeah. So that it makes sense on different levels. Um, you know, yeah. whether, you are, whether you are religious or not, whether you're, you know, what your motivation is, I'm trying to teach people on many different levels because I want to reach um, people who can make a difference on this planet. That's right. I'm not an engineer. I don't know anything about electronics. That's right. I don't know anything about, you know, but there's things that other people can do to make a difference on this planet. So I'm doing my bit, and then they can go and do their bit. Absolutely. Is, what the situation is, they can make a decision. What can I do to make a difference? Absolutely. So, so this is how, that's the way I see it. I believe in the collective. You got that I right. Believe, I believe that we all have different gifts and, and things that we can do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I, and it's not all about intelligence. No, you know, everybody has something that contributes to create the whole, to maintain exactly. the whole. You know, because this is a preservation of, of life itself, and I think that's what um, Earth. Her earth's doing, she's preserving life. Well, yes, I mean, um, you know, if the earth decided to, to, to wipe us off, yeah, I would, I'd say, well, we had it coming. Yeah, I, I couldn't blame her at all because uh, nobody could blame her at the end of the day. Well, but all the business with the oil, the yeah. oil spills, this business with the radiation of Fukushima. I mean, I'm, I'm just at the moment just amazed by what's going on in Japan. I, I'm so, and I'm amazed that it's not more public than it really is, because it's really so serious. It's not a joke. I saw a, I saw a video today that was heartbreaking. Was, I think it was 70 women, and they did this dying where they was protesting, um, you know, about what's going on in Fukushima and the attitude of the government. They want to restart a nuclear reactor, and they want to, they want to, they're opposing it. And you know the risk that they're under. You know, it, it, I mean, the, the whole idea of putting 55 nuclear reactors in a, in a part of the world where it's, you know, the, the ground rattles every single day. <laughs> I mean, 
It's ludicrous to begin with. Yeah. Madness. Yeah. But we do have mad people. Yeah. Um, Okay, so, uh, okay, we're talking about the high roles, like the elites and, you know, people who are just disrespecting the regard, you know, have no regard for the truth. What do you, do you know anything about the ego? And what do you think about it, if you do? Uh, you know, um, I'm actually, because I'm covering so many subjects, it's very difficult for me. Um, but I'm, in my own personal life, yeah. Yeah. Uh, understand a little bit of psychology. What's going on in the cultic? I call the cultic milieu these days. Um, what's going on in the new age community? Because there's people that make all sorts of claims, and then you find out that they are not what they claim to be. At not, all. not at all. Yeah. And so I've been studying um, um, psychopaths, sociopaths. The, the modern name is anti um, anti. Um, antisocial personality disorder. Isn't yeah, because I'm bringing it up because it's a problem. It's a problem now. Well, you know, narcissists. Yeah. Um, and what's going on with these people? Yeah. What is going on with these people? Yeah, it's a major problem. That's why I'm asking you, what do you think about the and, ego? Um, and the, the fact is that um, some people, they do not have the ability to process spiritual energies. Okay. So they have to get energies from people second hand. Okay. So they, they are literally acting like vampires. Yeah. And they it's an art form of how they extract energy and they get a big kick. Some people get a big kick out of human misery. Yeah. Uh, there's no other way to explain it. Yeah. They're not they cannot literally they cannot bring in higher energies into their energy field or into their souls. They're, they're dead. They're, they're, they're not there are a lot of there are a lot of living deads on the on, on, on the planet now, you know? That's why I want to know, do you think it has a connection to do w with the ego? The the ego, um, I'm I'm not a psychologist, so it's very difficult for me and I, I have Just to your own personal insight. Well I I I've spent some time and I'm sorry to reread the second because he talks a lot about the ego and personalities and this is information that was brought through by a woman called Jane Roberts right. and she worked in conjunction with her, with her husband, um, Robert Butts his name was and they're very famous, this material is very very highly regarded metaphysical information Right. And he talks about the inner and the outer ego but these, um, the narcissist, and the, an extreme narcissist is a psychopath Yeah. Okay. and these definitions sociopath, psychopath, malignant narcissist, they're all the same things, it's just degrees of how, how, um, it, 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 the experts have real difficulty trying to, like, define these people, but the whole point, I've, I've discovered this guy called Sam Bagnin, who is a, a psychopath, he actually came up as a psychopath and they tested him, but he's, he's not dangerous as such. Okay. What is he, a controlled <laughs> psychopath? Anyway, he's a self-controlled psychopath, Susan? <laughs> okay, uh, now, I found him very useful because he explains, he does lots and lots of videos, and he explains how these people think. Okay. And, and the, main, the main thing for these people is that they are constantly wanting a certain type of energy, a certain type of attention, it feeds them. So what kind of what kind of people are they attracted to, or are they? Um... They're, they're looking for empathic people that they can extract energy from, and I believe okay. that they're extracting like secondhand spiritual energy from people. They cannot. They're not born again. This is this yeah. is why I have, this is the thing about Christianity. What is what does born again mean? I believe that you will you become open to divine energies. Totally, totally. You I'm become, with you. You become, you'll be able to. You you can actually. You can literally. Just Soak it in from the environment. Yeah. The sheet that's supposed to be in the air. You can literally, you, if you're born again, you can actually bring this energy into yourself. It's a higher energy. It's a divine energy. Okay. You can. You don't have to extract that from anybody else. Whereas some people can't do that. So there's a certain type of energy around us 
that they need that they can't get so they go looking for it second hand and so there's all this whole bunch of tricks that they learn how to extract energy from other people got you and so, th so this is what these people now some people they are just not even human because mm. they they will do awful things they get a kick out of really sick things got so you. you've got this latest Magnata, is that how you pronounce his name? The, the guy that the oh the zombie guy. guy. Oh, I mean he was just extreme. Now the thing is with psychopaths is that oh the universe. Okay. You don't have to. They now know that they've got a different type of brain, but it's it's not just having slightly. I'm not sure about DNA, but they know for a fact that the brain um, they cannot process emotions like normal people. Okay. Um, now, what, what the thing with the, the psychopaths is that they can be born with these psychopathic traits, but if they're brought up in a loving family, it sort of negates it all. But if you're brought up in a family that's like hell, and you're, you're being beaten up, and all sorts of horrible things have been happening to you. So it'll bring that side of you out more. Yeah, the environment. Um, in Europe, there is something called a tall poppy. Okay. You know, when, when there's a field of poppies, everybody's, there's a lot of people who just like the idea of the, everything being equal. Okay. And there's, there's poppies that are standing up and, and they, they're sort of like a tall poppy. They want to cut that tall poppy down. And there are some people who, they are craving attention and energy okay. all the time. Okay. And they get jealous of anybody else who's getting attention than them and some people the narcissists they want all the attention for them got you all the time and it, it's it's a character defect as far as i'm concerned it is a character it's, it's defect the same issue yeah there's no, there's no sharing no at all with these people. they are not interested in sharing nothing they no. want all the limelight all the time yeah and so for me um i'm a seeker of the truth i yeah. believe that this is this is um I'm not doing this for limelight, I'm doing no. it because I think it's important and because this is what I can do and, and this is my contribution to society. Absolutely. This is, it's, no, it's no hassle for me to do the research and to teach it because that's what I can do. And you've been I doing it anyways, to be honest, because it's just who you I, are at the end of the day. Okay, that's yeah. right. Now, you know, if my house was burning down, I yeah. would like a fireman to come and fix it, actually. That's right. Or if there's a problem with the plumbing, I want a plumber to come and, you know, if there's a problem with my lights, I ain't gonna try and do it myself. I'm That's gonna right. be an it. I, you know, I recognise that everybody's got different skills. Absolutely. Okay? Now, the narcissists, um, they're not like that. They want to be the centre of the limelight all the time. And if they're not, it's trouble. And, they get aggressive. And, yeah. And, and th so these people are—it's just the way it is. I mean, I, I feel that um, some of these people, they've been in their childhood, their, their, their personalities. Now, they create a personality that they believe will provide them with the energy that they need. And if that doesn't work, they will create another personality. They're not, um, the ego, it, it's, they don't just have like a solid personality or a solid ego. So they have a dual it, ego? Some of these people have got split personalities. If you listen to the experts on this, they 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 like they like actors. Yeah. They are like actors. They yeah. create a persona and then they sell that in the hope that you'll like them, that you'll give them the attention that they're looking for, and they will get what they want. Right. Um, and they and at the end of the day, what they're looking for is energy mm. because they cannot absorb a certain type of energy from the environment and it's a spiritual energy if you ask it me so they're trying to survive as, as well they're trying to it's about survival and if they don't get this energy they feel like they're dying got you it's that strong with these people and this is what the and i i, I have no apologies for talking about it in, a, in a spiritual way and i can use christian terminology because i came from a christian background but most Christians wouldn't have anything to do with me because <laughs> I, I, I have different views. 
Right. No, well, you. I can, yeah. I can understand the concept of being born again if you're if that means opening up to the Christ energies, opening up to divine spiritual energies. That's to me is what being born again is. Totally. Absolutely. You can open up to these spiritual energies. You don't have to steal it from anybody else. Right. Okay. And that is what these narcissists and these psychopaths and these sociopaths they can't do that. So they're constantly doing things to extract this secondhand information, the energy from people. They're constantly doing things, and they're very clever at it. So is it is it is that a reason why they're a little bit more aggressive lately? Then, if you think of it in terms of like a, if you think of it in terms of like a tube of, of energy, yeah. Think of if what's happening is that with the environment, that tube of energy is getting knocked left, and right. And so energy is falling out. They're constantly losing energy. Yeah. If you, if, if you think inside of your central column, your core energy, but if you think about it, that it, it, it can sway backwards and forwards, backwards and, and as it's swaying backwards and forwards, it's losing energy. So they don't have. They're constantly looking on the lookout for energy because the environment's swinging about so much that they're losing energy all the time, well, especially when people are under stress. So. You've got this environmental stress, so their energy levels are going down all the time because they don't have the ability to like soak it in like other people. Right. So, so they're losing energy. So that's why they're, I believe, becoming more aggressive in this need to bring in energies. And so they're doing wild stuff. Okay. So they're starting to get very aggressive. And yeah, and they're all doing it in the name of to get attention, right? It's like. I, I was in a situation, I won't name name. Okay. I was in a situation where I used to go to church when I was like in my early 20s. Yeah. And I used to go with a certain person, I won't mention who it was. And I would love going to church and I'd sing the songs and I'd feel all happy and I'd literally fill up with energy. Okay? Yeah. Within five to ten minutes of leaving church, there was always a big argument. There was always a huge argument and I would just be like, you know, like a balloon that just deflates. Right. Literally, I was being sucked dry every single time. Every single, and I got to the point where I'd stop going because it was horrible. Right. I knew what was going to happen. This person was going to suck me dry every single time. Um, and um, I've not been so good actually. Um, the, the people. Um, I've got involved with this, I've got older. I've been a different type of person who's just been a little bit more clever about how to do it. Got you. <laughs> Not been as obvious. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so I've had a few surprises in the last few years with people um, because I didn't see it. You know, I, I, some people it was very obvious, but other people it wasn't as obvious that they were doing the same thing. Okay. And I think that in these environments, if you think about your in the metaphysical community it's called your core energy but if you think of it in terms of like a tube with, um, but it's it's literally being knocked around with the, with the environment because it's things are so now unstable in the environment yeah and that they're constantly losing energy and they're not filling up so they are then having to do things to give them energy uh, and, and i think that might explain there is other things as well. I also explain it in terms of, um, you know, if your energy field is, if, you're, if you think of yourself as being like a magnet and you've got these lines of magnetic force all the way around you, the environment is literally like playing you like a harp. But some people, their energy fields are so unbalanced that when they have a twang, <laughs> it's causing massive upset to them. So that's, a, that's actually a different thing. Mm. These, these people with personality disorders, this is a new area for me. It's even though I've been spent the last four or five years looking at it, it's such a huge subject. And remember, I'm trying to study lots of the more scientific stuff. So, um, but I've talked about evolution and devolution, and I think this people are being upset by the environment. The idea that the metaphysical, the message that should have been going out to the metaphysical community is that people need to strengthen their energy field. Your energy field is becoming a shield. We've got to be like the little orbs of light, have your little ball of light around you 
Um, and that should shield you and keep you stable um, because, of the, because the environment is now... Um, well, this is the judgment. To yeah. me, this is the judgment. Yeah. That's what's taking place. Yeah. Who's going to cope and who's not going to cope. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Um, and I... Yeah. I've really had to sit back and wonder what are the people about? You know, what what are they about? What is their motivation? Yeah, it's bewildering. Is, do they not understand? Not yeah. for me, as I keep talking about the fact I have I can contribute certain things to society. Right. But there's other people that contribute what they do. Right. You, you, we all have to rely on complete strangers. Yeah. No. You know, if if the plumber's coming in to do something, I want to make sure that they're safe. Totally. I don't want some nutcase coming into my house. Right. To fix the plumbing or an electrician, and or you know, you go to the doctors or the dentist, and they have a bad day, and they they prepare to kill you. You, you know, we, this is this is why I'm so disturbed by the metaphysical community that didn't understand these principles, didn't even think it's relevant. It's very relevant. It's very important. And, and, I, and so this is, I mean, I, I'm sure some people don't understand where I'm coming from, but I do not want to live in a society full of mad people, thank you very much. Thank I you. don't want to either, that's not fun. So if you think about it, I mean, some of the stories that I pick up and I've read, and I, I don't even want to put them on my blog, I, I try to limit the number of stories. I know, uh, for my page, I am so, even though I post a lot, y'all know I post a lot, but I am so picky with what I put on because there's so much craziness out there. Exactly, and, and I sort of, um, I mean, I've seen videos of people arguing about nothing. And yeah, like yeah, they, the petty, yeah, they're very petty. And um, this is unacceptable, this is unacceptable. Unacceptable is you know, right. Um, Yeah, I don't believe it's going to get better anytime soon. I do believe, like, especially this summer, because I, I received that insight in my meditation, I believe this summer is going to be a summer that we will always remember for a very long time. It's a keep your hats on kind of summer. Hold on to your hats. Oh, um, you know, um, I Yeah. Um, and I've always. Um, That's what got you so far. And I, I sort of. But for me, I, I want to understand my reality. So I don't just go from one source. I'm interested in the science, how things actually work, yeah. how things are interrelated to each other. Yeah. And living in a very, very strange time because we, we, have, we have to understand that we are part of. Um, a sort of a part of the cosmos that we're actually it's not just earthlings we're actually cosmic beings okay we're so in a, a cosmic environment that's so, changing so we're not just earthlings we're cosmic beings too okay so this is my new thing because i've been saying it since last year and i don't i think it goes right over people's head but i don't believe that we're human beings anymore i believe we're soul beings are becoming soul beings but i feel more of soul being than a human being what do you think explain, of that explain, explain that to me because I, um, I want to know okay because um to me that explains who we are more universally than than a human being because to me we are a soul we are large we are consciousness we are energy 
And so when I use the word soul being, that's more expansive to my understanding of who we are now. It just fits more to who we are more in my mind because I use both sides of my brain, you know? And when I use the word human being, it's constricted, it's limited, it's, it's just, it just doesn't define us anymore because we're so cosmic now, we're so cosmic. Um, I've had many mystical experiences yeah. most of my life. Yeah. And, um, one of the ways that I can tell who's genuine and who's not is if people have had similar experiences to me. Yeah. And I've had many experiences, well, quite a few times where I've been in two places at once. Yeah. Um, I'm actually been outside my body looking at me. Um, and that's quite normal for me. I, you know, me too. I don't, I, don't, I don't get freaked out by it at all. Me neither. Um, I was telling my girlfriend about my my latest experience with that, and she's like, "Oh wow!" I was like, "Yeah, it was really cool." So it's um, this business about what is a human being. Yeah. It's a very strange because there's there's a level of consciousness what I call the business end. Yeah. Like, <laughs> there is another part of my consciousness that is me, but it is aware of much more. Totally. It's aware of realms um it's a very difficult to explain it but i call it the business end <laughs> oh i call it the witness i know who you're calling you're talking about the one who witnesses me the watcher actually yeah exactly <laughs> yes the watcher it's like, yeah it's you. you know it's you yeah you were actually two places at once totally just the obvious so just much the, more there's, there's part of my consciousness totally have d a totally different way of operating if that's what you mean by um soul being the soul being that's exactly what i mean so um, because i think a human being is so one-dimensional where soul being isn't one-dimensional you're super dimensional you know, you're multidimensional, and I just, it, it doesn't, I hate the word human being now. It's so boxy, so, uh, Yeah, okay, because so there's more, there's more than that. I mean, I'm, I knew that some people would be frightened with all this, but for me, I've had a mystical experience all my life. So yeah, me too. It's, it's like, it's quite normal. It's, to me, it's normal that we can talk about it publicly. <laughs> I'm like, I'm this is awesome. <laughs> before I used to just t tell my friends and they look at me like oh here she goes again or I used to journal or talk my husband but nobody understood me you know so I used to journal a lot just to get it out but now that I can talk to people and talk to people that I respect and admire and just talk to people about this this is just like this is hog heaven are you kidding me <laughs> I'm not alone <laughs> Oh my god, me too! <laughs> right? so oh, me. Like, 
But not anymore because do you notice how spirituality and science is uh, merging together? They're forming a union and I think it's beautiful. Um, I can't do it any other way. I can't. Um, for me, it's just normal to. Yeah, because how, how could you interpret life properly without either or? Really? My mind doesn't, I need it, first of all, I can handle the mystical stuff because, you know, that comes through meditation, whatever, visions, whatever, but my, I have an analytical mind, I need proof, I need why, especially why, I need to know why, and I need some kind of understanding, and I need, and I need solid, I need something solid, right? I'm exactly that way, I'm exactly that way, I think my problem is, is that I have to be careful because I don't want people thinking I'm too mystical. Because I don't want them starting to relate to me like I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that's the tricky part. <laughs> I know. Because <laughs> I can only hang with you so far on the mystical side, and then I'm like, irks. <laughs> Time. The planet, you know, and the funny thing 
I found an article. Yeah. And um, in this article, a professor said, a professor of physics, he said that it's impossible for this amount of charge to have hit the planet at one time because it would have knocked out all the satellites. Hmm. Okay, because the satellites are very susceptible to electric currents in space. And we are getting a few knocked out on a regular basis, actually. Okay. But the whole point is that we've been getting this build-up and build-up slowly over 20 years. So you get these massive coronal mass ejections, trillions of... Oh, well, NASA's saying the biggest ones are like a trillion and a half tons of plasma. Okay. Hitting the planet. But then we get the next one. And then the next one. And then the Earth is literally soaking up this energy. And hmm. so it's not that um, the brooms are standing up on their own because we've had one big event. It's because the, the level has now got to the stage where the whole planet is charged. Oh, now, wow. I, I one time was uh, going through the airport in Stavanger when I was living in Norway. So that was four or five years ago now. And um, they had to turn the scan off, the x-ray machine off because they said there's too much current in the ground and the machine won't work. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. It's interesting. So is that, you think, ca causing the sounds? You know how people are hearing these strange sounds around the globe? Do you think sounds of the apocalypse. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that's what the sounds are? Are the magnetic energies? Um, and I believe that the there's big holes now and there's magnetic shields. Yeah. And we're literally getting energies streaming in. Wow. By the Earth's magnetic field, they're literally coming in through big holes. Wow! And um, so we're getting these. Um, some people call them electrical discharges. I'm not sure because I always think of electrical discharges like lightning, but we're, we're definitely getting vortexes of energy. And around the planet, it's like a geometrical matrix of energy points. What, what people have called the portals and the vortexes. Yeah. Um, and I have a theory. Now this is purely theory that a lot of airports have been sighted in vortexes where, for better communication purposes. And so we are getting some strange um, events. There's been a few airports in, uh, in America where the, the, like all the windscreens have cracked because they've just got so charged that they've literally just cracked. There's been planes where, um, stories of planes where the windscreens have just cracked because they just got so charged. So we are getting this points, um, well, it's, it's, <laughs> it doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, the, literally the electric fields around our planet are getting stronger and stronger. And that has all sorts of implications for our modern Yeah, lifestyles. how is that going to, how is that going to affect our environment though? Um, it's, Yeah. Okay. So we just have to, some things we're just gonna have to write out and see. Some things uh is beyond our own imagination right now. You think? Um, it's chaotic. I mean, I think a lot of the problem is the chaos. Okay. And the energy's coming in and energy's leaving. Okay. So when, you, when you have an earthquake, you get what they call precursor signals. Yeah. Yeah. So we're getting um, a lot of very strange things happening. Yeah. Um, and it, it, this is, and, and this is to me, I mean, I, I've tried to cover many different subjects and explain it on a scientific point of view. But at the end of the day, the real message that, of, of why I started all this is because I came across New Ages talking about the Earth's magnetic field becoming quite unstable and people being affected. And the whole idea was to, is to explain to people that there is something you can do. You can work on your energy field, learn how to balance, learn how to strengthen your energy field. Um, and it's been difficult for me because within the metaphysical community, there are some very strange characters. And um, to say the least, people with issues, and um, you know, there's a lot of fighting for attention. Totally. 
Oh my goodness. Energy, energy fight. Yes. Cool. And I, and it's, um, it's called Energy Fight. Energy Fight. Yeah. Energy Fight. Yeah. Energy Fight. You know what? I, I, when you get to a certain level within yourself, that becomes um, so totally obvious that the connection between us, the connection, the connection between everything, you know. So we just have to hope and pray that more people get to that place within themselves, in their core, where they see the significance. Because you learn and understand the significance of um, the we, the collective we. Yeah. There is virtually nothing on the planet that's not being affected by this um, by this space weather. Yeah. By the energy is literally affecting everything. Yeah, that's good though. So I think yeah, it's good. It's all energy that is literally affecting everything. Yeah. And that is an incredible concept. Yeah, because it shows you, yeah. That is an incredible concept. That yeah. Yeah, could you and, know what, Susan? We have to we have to live because if there's too much of this energy coming in at any one time, the impact is, is you know, could be quite serious. You know what? So we you, have to stop thinking about doing things differently. Yeah, but from your scientific view, I think some people um, mistake the kumbaya we are all one <laughs> versus the kumbaya we are one connected element material created the same way. And so could you just give them a difference between the kumbaya we are one and the kumbaya and the reality of our oneness Yeah. Why people behave in certain ways? Yeah. 
ways. Yeah. What's triggering people? Yeah. So people are being triggered left, right, center. Yeah, they are. And the motivations for why people are being triggered. Yeah. I mean, some of the stories you know, are unbelievable the way that people are treating each other. But the narcissists, if they feel that um, they're not getting the energy that they want from people. They get more they, aggressive, they yeah. Get nasty. They can get really nasty. They're real. That's why I wanted to talk about it because they're getting. They're, they're, yeah. They can, they're like a have a three-year-old having a tantrum yeah in a grown-up body it's not cool <laughs> and um so for me there is needs to be tremendous learning we've got to grow up yeah it's, it's like people need to just grow up yeah but it's a part of we have to remember who we are and we have to value ourselves again and we have to um get over our insecurities and our self doubt. Easier said than done, though, isn't it, really? Huh? <laughs> I, I'm sort of, um, I'm, look, I'm looking for the grown ups. I'm looking for people in my own personal life. Me too. That, that can, that they can see the visionaries, they can see on, at a different level. Yeah. That they, they, they understand that things at a higher level. Yeah, it's there's about the big picture. There's a lot of people that don't see the big no they don't they don't but 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 susan that goes back to somebody who self-reflects and somebody isn't i think the problem that someone like you are having meeting people and and um you know having a rapport and a better and deeper friendship with more more people is because a lot of people aren't self-reflecting so how could you expect somebody that self-reflects and somebody who doesn't to even get along you're coming from two different places here yeah Yeah, um, you know, you're I, coming I'm from... Just, just hoping to find a few. Me too, honey, it's hard. They can see, they can see a bigger picture. Yeah, it's they can really see hard. On a, on a more cosmic scale. Absolutely. We are becoming cosmic beings. Yes, we are. Um, and human beings are not the only beings in the universe. Right. We're that not that special. It's that very important. And I'm sorry, but I've read stories that I... Yeah. And, and, you know, well, some people they need to see it to believe it, you know, and others yeah. it doesn't fit their frame of what reality is. You know what? I was doing my blog and I was writing all these UFO stories and I realized what was happening from, from my education and what I've been learning and everything. But it wasn't until I saw a little ball of light myself. I was. It was about January. It was the end of January. I think it was 2010. I think it was 2010 or 20, I think it was 2010, that would be a bit wrong. And uh, it could be 2011, I can't remember. And um, it's, in my, it's in my blog though. And I was literally walking back from the shops with my shopping. So I wasn't in a meditative state or anything. You know, I was just walking back and it was dark. It was nearly 6.30 and it was dark at that stage. And I saw this neon colored ball of light, but it was breathing. It was literally pulsating and breathing. And it was like the size of a beach ball, but pulsating, but it's smaller and bigger. But the biggest size was like a beach ball size. And this thing, I could see it coming towards me. And I'm like, what's that? What? I mean, I was like shocked. And I've been recording hundreds of these stories as well, but it's not the same until you see the thing yourself. <laughs> and it was cute. It was beautiful. It was like a star. Aww. It, was, it was like a star. It was beautiful. And it sort of, it hit the, the road. Very, it hung very closely to my houses and it passed me and I'm watching this ball of light and I'm like, jaw dropped I'm like, what's that? It's, it, you know, this is where the concept of the fairies come from yeah this is where the concept of the original fairies little ball of light this thing was little one this little one was cute Aww. and it, it looked like a star because it was pulsating but it was like rays of light coming out of it Right. As well at the same time, as well as pulsating, and I'm like, wow. and it was, it was, it was absolutely beautiful. It, yeah. Nothing to be frightened of at all. No. But I was still stunned. <laughs> see, and I'm like, I wasn't in a meditative state. I wasn't afraid to see anything. I was walking in with my shopping. <laughs> and people have seen these balls of light driving their cars, and they see something at the side of the road. They stop the car. They get out of the car. What's that? <laughs> So 
what do you think then about uh, NASA and the Vatican working together and the Vatican saying that we should welcome our astral terrestrial brothers? Do you think that's all part that's of? Because, that's because they know what's coming. Okay. They, they talk about ETs, extraterrestrials, and they talk about shadow life. Okay. They know that the balls of light are the shadow life. Now the difference with me is that I, I just say I'm not too worried about ETs. Okay. Uh, and I, I don't talk about that. Ufologists are all into all that. Well, I, I'm not. I'm interested in explaining to people that there is a shadow biosphere on this planet, that there are beings of light on this planet, and that that, that uh, it's a very diverse um, sort of um, you know like a, a biosphere. It's a part of the ecology of the planet. Okay. That to me, that is what I want to explain. That's my contribution. I ain't going to talk about ETs. I don't want to really know, quite frankly. That's another subject. Um, but the church are well aware of this. Okay. And there are people with some very interesting information out talking about things. Um, I'm not going to go into that now, but I've, first of all, I wasn't sure how much the Catholic Church knew. Okay. But now, they've always known. The ancient texts have got some very interesting pictures. Yeah, I, have, I found some very interesting paintings myself. And um, they've always known. Yeah. They've, they've always known there's, there's a presence on this planet. They've yeah. Always and, um, yes, it, and I don't, I don't really want to say much more than that, but they know that at these times, when the energy levels on this planet get very high yeah. it attracts a lot of these beings. The energy that's coming to the planet is very special. Yeah. It's, it's, it's called Christ energy. Christ, Christ means crystalline energy. Yeah. And it's highly mental. And it's the highest quality energy you can get in the universe. And they're coming for it. I know. They, Everybody wants not, a piece of it. Everyone wants a piece of it. They're not interested in us humans. No. It's, it has nothing to do with us. They're like, favorite. we want to... <laughs> no, it's it's like the big quantum jump, you know, and they want a quantum leap too. This is so funny because I now I realize what's going on. They're not interested. You know, no, they want a jump. I've been saying that for since last year. I'm like they're only here because they they, they want a quantum leap just as much as we want to. I I believe that what's happening is that this special energy. Yeah. Yeah. And um, these beings literally follow it around. This energy, wherever it's going, they'll follow it. Oh, oh, you could, la oh, you could have the observers that do that too. <laughs> you know, I, I, I think there's all kind of beings that are following this energy. Ones who want to take the jump, ones who are observing the jump, and ones who are just observing us how we are reacting to the jump. <laughs> Yeah. We just had this amazing thing happen in Israel this week where the the, the the official explanation is that the Russians tested a missile and allowed it to go out of control. It it, it sort of um, misfired about two thousand five hundred kilometers out of it's either two thousand five hundred or three thousand five hundred kilometers. I can actually check that actually on my blog. But they're trying to claim that Something that looks like a missile went out of control over Israel. Now, this is a bit of a country that's not into, like, you know, they're a bit volatile. With the right. Temper. And they're not the kind of people that will allow that sort of thing to happen and get away with it. But it's amazing just how quiet and calm the Israelis have been over this so-called missile. Now, I believe what really happened is that we're getting um, huge blasts of energy conscious energy, sparks of consciousness coming in and we are seeing, it's like a delivery of energy and information and we're getting energy going into the ground, um, we're getting energy going into our atmosphere um, and I believe that these huge spirals like the one that we saw in Norway, yeah. it's just a, a manifestation, it's a manifestation of cosmic energy 
Um, and that's why the, you get these petroglyphs with the rock carvings, where in ancient times we've had this energy that also hit the planet previously. And so you have these, the, the ancient people saw these things in the sky, they're just copying what they saw. Totally, it's all over in drawings, everywhere. Yeah, exactly. So but spirals, isn't that... It's, isn't it's that... a manifestation, it's not, it's not like a, a UFO as such, it's not a UFO, it's a plasma manifestation. Now this is my difficulty as a teacher, because lightning is plasma. Yeah. So, you know, um, the sun is a ball of plasma, the stars are made of plasma. Correct. 99.9999% of the universe is plasma. So it's very difficult when you start trying to define these things to teach people because these orbs, they're made of plasma too. But it's, it, it's you think of it like the um, chemical table, you know, you've got all the different elements. There must be a, an equivalent for plasma. There must be a different makeup of energy. With a different makeup, you get different things being formed different levels of intelligence. Okay. So, but at the moment, we have this huge thing happen over in Israel where we had another spiral in the sky. It wasn't a brilliant spiral, but it was definitely a spiral. I mean, it was spectacular. I mean, literally, um, the, the, the Twitter just went crazy. Wow. Um, big thing that happened uh, over Israel this week. And um, we, I believe that we are going to be seeing a lot more of that. It's, it's a sort of, it's, we're experiencing this delivery, but this delivery is on so many different levels. Well, the, thing came in, the thing came in like a missile, it literally came in like a missile, and then there was a breakup uh, of a smaller piece coming off, and then that thing spiraled. I mean, it, the videos, there's loads of videos on the internet. I now. can't wait to see that. I have to see that. Yeah, you have to see that. I've so, th do you think that, you know, all this has anything to do with time travel? Do you think we're experiencing time travel, time travelers? Oh no, I, 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 um, this is a subject I don't talk about. So okay. I, it, it's, maybe it's possible, maybe it's possible, but um, I'm not. Because there were, a, I brought it up because there were a few stories uh, early this year uh, about people being found, like, uh, in this building, and he, uh, said he was from our future. There's two different incidents I read about. I, 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 it's a subject I don't cover at all because it's just, I think I do quite a lot, to be honest, already. I can't... Um, it's too it's vague? Not, it's, it's, not an, it's not an area of interest for me. Okay. Um, it, it is very subjective. It's very I subjective. I don't know how you would actually scientifically study that. Yeah, it's so vague. Yeah, it's very... I mean, like, for example, if people say reincarnation, for example, that's much more easy to investigate that because yeah. if someone's born now, they can provide all sorts of information that you can go and check out. Totally. So that's a different... If, if, for example, someone can provide information that's not widely known, uh, then maybe if they've come from the past. Then if, if they've come from the future, you can't test that. That is so true. You can't. If they come from the past, then they may have information that you can check out. But that is so true. The future, you can't check that. That so, is so true. So that's. I mean, I, I just sort of, you know, those sort of stories, I, I don't really pay much attention yeah, to. Yeah, cause because it leaves too many questions, Mark. And the reason why I brought it up, because people were saying the spiral in Norway was a, um, a time hole. No, I, I don't believe, no. Oh, okay. Believe, like a, a wormhole or something. Yeah, I read that, yeah, people were on that bag wagon. I was like, hmm, I don't know. Because yeah, I don't know, yeah. because it's such a big area for me. Yeah. Where you literally get that the string coming through, and then it's to me that the string is about how it travels through space time, and then you get this thing where the, like a, a hole opens up, and then another thing pops out. Oh wow! So you know, I mean, I talk about this a little bit in my book about um, the cosmos. I mean, like a grid system of string, and. Um, Maybe what people are visiting on a small scale, or maybe we're seeing just how it really works in our atmosphere. Yeah, maybe, it, right? It, this, it's, the thing is, is that um, there's a lot of cover up. I mean, the world government, I mean, I don't know what they're thinking. I don't know how they're going to cope with this because it is definitely happening. 
Yeah. And they can't deny it. You, know, you can't deny it for any much longer anyways because it's out in the open. You know, things are getting tougher and tougher, yeah. and tougher for these people. They're yeah. denying this. I mean, I mean, quite frankly, the mishap, the so-called mishap out of control over Israel is, is quite something else. It was five countries. It was actually seen in like Lebanon, Jordan, Palestine. Wow. It was seen in um, Turkey. Wow. I mean, this thing was Wow. Seen at least five countries. So I love that. Isn't it perfect that we have the available technology to make news travel fast now at this time? Real fast. I mean, Twitter lights up like. I mean, I love it. Like, how perfect time. Talk about timing, right? Like, we have everything. No one's in the dark anymore. But, Susan, we thank you so much for being here. And there's a question I ask every one of our guests when they come on before they leave Who do you think um, we are? bad or right or wrong, I just want to hear your truth. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I believe that we're, we're our spark of consciousness. Okay. And, awesome. Uh, quite a, a, a beautiful, um, quite complex being, but we are actually becoming more evolved, even more complex. Um, and I think it's, um, we are a reflection of the complexity that out there in the universe. We, 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 live in, we don't live in a simple universe. We, believe, we live in a Beautiful. And and where can our viewers uh, find your work? Could you tell them a little oh. bit about what you're up to? Any new projects? Any new books coming out? Um, well, my website is um, www.susanrenison.com. There's a tremendous amount of information on my website for free. I've been doing the blog for four years. So there's a lot of free information. Um, lots and lots of links. Um, I have... Um, various different essays that I've written over the years um, explaining um, the, what's happening um, on this planet in terms of space, whether energy-driven evolution. I, there's also my Planetary Challenges report that I wrote for the, um, for the White House because I heard this, that they were actually asking questions, asking metaphysical leaders what on earth is going on. Hmm. And I was so appalled they said they didn't know that I actually wrote a 40 page report I actually tried to send it to the White House as well and it didn't, nothing happened well, but maybe they found it but I didn't get a response Right. but I didn't, it stopped me and then two years later I decided to put the, after Fukushima I decided to put the report on my website for people to download and read so it was slightly changed I tarted it up a bit and I um, called it the citizens summary oh um, so that's available. Now, people who are not into metaphysics actually appreciate that because I'm, I'm not interested in entertaining the metaphysical community, quite frankly. This is a straight facts of what's happening. Um, so I'm, that, to me, is, is important for people who are serious to actually who want to understand what's taking place. It's a nice summary. It's not at a high level, but it's I call it a citizen summary. So there's previous articles that I've written, there's also previous interviews that I've done, there is the presentation that I did in Holland at Delft Technical University in Holland where I gave a one hour presentation to the students and then I did a, it was two hours and 45 minutes there about evening presentation Um, and that was related to my latest insights, I'd written some essays that had been translated into Dutch and then I was invited um, to give a presentation and I basically talked about space weather but more my latest insights but a lot of people I spent a lot of time preparing um, that presentation and um, people were a bit amazed because I, I it's pictorial it's um, it was amazing it was well done it was great and uh, people have been very impressed and it actually started to go viral so yeah a lot of people Consider the fact that the evening one is two hours and 45 minutes. It's a long, um, I think, 
last time I got an estimate, there was something like 60,000 hours of viewing. Wow. It's well worth it. It was great. I've posted it on our page. It's um, great. And it, it's, it's very, you know, when you consider that some of the stuff, the atmospheric stuff that's happening. Yeah. Yeah. An awful lot. Yeah. Things that I didn't know that I've learned. And I'm sharing what I'm learning. But you know what? It's so strange on this planet. We're, we're, we're constantly learning new things about what's happening. Things that are supposed to be rare that are happening every week now. Yeah. <laughs> you got that so, right. Yeah. So there's my interviews, there's my articles, there's books you can buy. I've just produced um, the, inter the um, articles that I wrote. I did like a column in a UK magazine, Paradigm Shift magazine. So people don't want my book, which is quite technical, and they just want to read. Um, I think it was um, 12 or 13. Um, columns. Some of them are long and some of them are short. Um, that's still about 140 pages or something. Uh, if they want to, it's 134 pages plus the cover. But they want a nice introduction to space weather, and it's it's still providing the background information, the government announcements, the the, the announcement, the um, reports. I, I I give sort of like a overview of what's happened with space weather, and I did that for three years. So that's collected together. That's the latest ebook that I've done. So um, my, my book, Tune of the Diamonds, you can actually buy that through Amazon in the UK. Um, there is also an ebook you can buy from my website, which is the latest version of my book. Beautiful. And it's quite big. It's over what, 550 pages. The, it has something like 1,190 references. I, when I work and put together information, I mean business, and I spend a long time so I'm, I've not had people arguing with me about what I'm saying because I've thoroughly yeah, you're thorough. investigated yeah, this. Yeah, that's true. I've taken this deadly serious. Yeah, that is true. And the planet being charged up like a battery is a serious business. Yeah. Changing the climate. It's got nothing to do with CO2. The scientists are now admitting it's space climate change. It is driving changes on this planet. Yeah. And it's happened before on yeah. this planet. So I take this very, very seriously. I take it very seriously in my work. Um, my blog is a little bit more light-hearted. If I'm in a bad mood, you'll know about it through the blog. <laughs> <laughs> love it. <laughs> I love your blog, though. It's, it's so much information, and I'm telling you, it's like my new favorite spot now because I like it. It's, you you um, post a lot of good stuff. Yeah. Because I, I really felt people needed to understand yeah. how how all these changes are relating to our daily life and to our daily experience. You know, the stuff that's happening in the skies, the, the, you know, the strange clouds, the, 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 the plasma manifestations, what's happening with the sun. Right. And it roars now that aurora season was supposed to finish in April, but it's now June. And we're still getting it, yeah. Still. Yeah. I mean, you know, Aurora's over the deep south, south of America, of south, uh, sorry, of uh, North America. And it's, I just want people to understand how we can, how the changes are taking place. Yeah, so they don't react fearfully. Well, it's it's just that um, I don't want people thinking that I'm making this all up. Right. I am trying to explain to people how this transformation yeah. So that's what the blog is about, and how humans are being affected. Yeah. Why I think there's evolution taking place. Why I believe that there's devolution taking place. Yeah. There's even, I mean, I, I also bring in a spiritual element, but not in a way that's new agey. I don't believe it's new agey at all, my approach. For example, this week, there was one of the last things I put up was uh, stem cells. How they've discovered that the cells, that even though people are dead, there's bits of their bodies still alive. Yeah, I read that. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they, that the, the incidents with the boy waking up and asking for water. Oh, that's you know what? This, well, this is the business with the Christ energies. Yeah. This, this is the this energy that I call negative entropy. This is the scientific term for it. How you can have this rejuvenating or re-energizing energy or this life-giving energy? Because with the whole point of the chaos on the planet, you're getting you get big splats of this energy. It's not evenly distributed at all so that's how this whole business with the zombie apocalypse how some people are trying to get to fight people in a way 
It's madness. On my blog, I try to differentiate and explain what is taking place, the existence of a certain type of special energies on the planet, how that is affecting people, how the chaos of the planet is affecting people. And I, I've worked very hard. There's a lot of information on my blog to teach people what's taking place. Okay. Well, we thank you so much. You were very informative, delightful, and a pleasure to have. Oh, thank you for, very much for saying yes. You, you know, you've been turned down interviews. I feel so lucky. I'm like, yeah, great timing. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, for me, your invitation was very sweet. I, uh, I liked your invitation. And um, I just wanted to chat, actually. Uh, I, chat. I, I, felt, I feel that I've been quite positive. You know, you haven't seen it. You know, I, haven't, I feel I've been quite positive and I've enjoyed sharing what I know. Uh, so thank you for the invitation. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Susan. Viewers, I hope you enjoyed Susan. It was an honor to have her here. Namaste, Susan. That's as much yogi as you're going to get. <laughs>